Greetings, I'm Barent, and welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop. Today we're going to be continuing our playthrough of Shadows of Killforth. We have our vampire and our watcher. They have just started out on this adventure. They had a little bit of running with a couple people, and so it kind of cost them some of their health in the last episode. Of course, we were able to locate our armor, so we do have that for our vampire. And I asked for some names for the vampire and the watcher, and we got Claudia. That's not bad. We're going to go ahead and use that. That's a great name for our vampire. So she's going to be Claudia, and we're still going to have the watcher. I never got any names for her, but that's okay. Maybe just calling her the watcher might be okay. She is, after all, a ninja. Maybe she doesn't have a name or a past. That's kind of cool. Cool. Now, in the last video, there were a couple of things that we have to fix. The first one is this card. Actually, I'm not going to be able to fix this one. Up here, it says map, trophy, force, draw, and fully resolve a night card when then play continues as normal. I am only supposed to draw the night card after we're successfully completing this place, not when it hits the board. So I accidentally took one extra night card. So I'm guessing at some point we might go over there and solve this one because after all it's worth five gold. That's absolutely amazing. So if that happens, I'm not going to be drawing a night card when we do actually complete this if we ever get there. Also, when we played this card, it said that I was supposed to put my claim token on it. And the person that claimed it was going to be our watcher. So we have to take one of our tokens here to show that we have claimed that location so only she can actually succeed at taking care of this place there we go that's it we were able to clear up a couple of things from the last video do you think our watcher and claudia are going to be able to continue taking down the gloom in killforth to find out i need you to meet me at the co-op shop So our watcher being first gets to act first. I think the first thing, since we only have two action points, I think she's going to go ahead and use one of those to go ahead and heal herself back to full. So we have a really raring to go player in the next round. I still have one more action point to use when we go back to her. So Claudia is going to be going next, and Final Fantasy XIV Botman gave me a great idea. He said, why don't you just use the Wicker Basket? It's a deed, and you can draw two loot tokens. Maybe I'll get a health potion or something out of it. That's a great idea. You can do a deed action for free during your turn, and one of the deed actions is to use one of your item tokens. So I'm going to go ahead and use this and draw two loot tokens. So we're going to reach into our handy-dandy bag here, and let's see what we get. I'll mix them up a little bit, and I'm going to grab two. There we go. I got our two loot tokens. Our first one is... Oh, a trap! Lose one HP immediately! <laughs> That's terrible! Alright, so we lost one HP. That's awesome. Our next one is... Hemp Rope. Add one success to a sneak test. Alright, we're going to go ahead and keep... We're going to get rid of this one. And I'm going to get rid of this one as well. These do not go back in the bag unless you're out of them. We're just going to set these aside. Now, it's going to be our actual action. I was actually thinking about moving, but now I think we're going to heal. We're going to... Actually, no, I lied. We are going to move. We're going to move one square with our AP action. And now that I think about it, actually, I'm going to veil this and allow myself to move that way. Because, of course, like we did in the last video, I gain one move AP when I veil this. Now, of course, I don't get the bonuses from this, but that's okay. Now, if this card, let's say, had a veil action I could do, it doesn't mean I don't get to roll these dice. You get to roll the dice if you veil a card. You just don't get the bonuses that are on the card from veiling it. I hope that makes sense. Now, we're going to go ahead and do a move action. So I'm going to move Claudia back over here to the Membo, the shrine. We're going to move back to the shrine because I can do a market action here on her next turn. And I can heal her using some of her gold she has. Now that Claudia has gone, we're going to use our action, our move action to move up to the forging castle. And we don't have to draw a encounter card because there already is one here. Now, of course, that's all her action. She's going to be done for the turn. So I'm going to go ahead and spend my 1 AP to do a market action. There's three different things you can do during the market action. One is you can gain gold, health back equal to the gold you pay. So I'm actually going to pay two gold to heal myself two HP. The other two things you can do is you can draw three cards from any one deck and buy those as an asset. So you mean then you gain access to them immediately. They do not go in your hand as rumors. You gain them as assets like we did with our armor card. And you can put that right into play. 
but of course you have to pay for it with gold. We only have one size going to happen. And the other thing you can do is you can sell cards back to the market for half of what they're worth. So obviously we're not selling this. We need this for our story mode, our saga here, but that's going to be her turn. She's done a market action to heal herself back to full. Now, of course, we've also gone ahead and camped with our watcher because she has no more action points, but we have one more with our vampire. Claudia is going to use that action to move. And we're gonna move Claudia right back over to the Serene Lake. She's a big fan of the Serene Lake. But you know, the reason, like I've said before, that we're going there is both of our keywords are found on these blue cards in theory. We already have our enemy, so we need to find either a stranger or a planes card. Since there isn't an encounter there, we have to draw one. Let's see what we found. We have found, oh my gosh, look at this thing, a mist dra- Oh, there's no way we're tilling this. This thing's gonna kill us. Map, sacrifice a title. Oh, it's a trophy. Defeat a humanoid enemy at any location. Wow, this guy is ridiculous. Look, he's got five health and six attack. Oh, I should have gone hidden, but I couldn't. All right, we're going to put him down, and we actually have to go ahead and fight him. All right, so we're going to have to fight a mist dragon. Oh, we're totally not going to be able to take this guy down. This is going to be an absolute blowout here. All right, so he starts with six dice, but he also gets an extra die because he surprised us. We can't even be surprised. I know I said I should have gone hidden. I can't even hide because of that suit of armor I'm wearing. I don't ever gain surprise. So it doesn't mean I wouldn't be able to be hidden. He wouldn't be able to surprise us, but we can't surprise him. But anyway, he's got seven dice. We've got three. If we can survive at least this round, we can flee and get out of here. All right, let's roll these dice up and see how it goes. All right, we got one six. Oh, look, he didn't get any successes. All right, well, that's fantastic. We're still not sticking around. I think we're getting out of here. Even though we did one health and we only have to do four more. Yeah, only four. That's ridiculous. I think we're getting out of here. He does lose the one because he's no longer surprised, but six on three is definitely not a fight I want to be in. So we are going to run from this encounter. So since we decided to flee from our mist dragon here, there's the way it works is if I was fighting the ancient, which is our enemy at the very end, you can't flee. It's a fight to the death. But if it's any other monster, you can go ahead and flee from them. And how that works is you return from the square you just came from, or at least an enemy free location, and you're going to have to camp right away. Well, the good news is we had no more AP, so camping isn't the bad, worst strategy for us. Anyway, I was actually planning to camp next. Also, that means he fully heals, so he no longer is hurt at all. So this mist dragon, wow, this guy's out of control. What does it say down here? Magnificent elemental beast, eons old, with ethereal glistening beauty from beyond the veil. Yep, he's probably the hardest guy in that deck. So I think, sadly, our Serene Lake is now out of commission for a while until we can find some stuff to actually take it out with. So since both of our characters have made camp, we have to draw our next night card. And we have found Lightning Strike. Oh, what's this? Weather. Revealed. Discard an enemy from play. Oh, that's perfect. Well, guess what? Our Mist Dragon is being discarded. I can discard an enemy from play. And he's an enemy. So bye-bye, Mr. Mist Dragon. That's awesome. Map. Heroes entering any planes lose one AP. Oh, no, that's terrible. That's where we need to go. Okay, let's see down here. It says, the power of nature, splitting trees, igniting dry bushes, and burning the unwary. All right, so this is a weather card. It's going to remain in play until we find another weather card. So we're going to put it... Okay, I should actually put the discard pile over here so we can put our weather cards in play right there. And now we're going to go into the dawn phase and heal our characters. And by healing, I mean we're going to go ahead and gain back our AP for next turn. And since our Watcher did make camp first, she's going to remain our first hero. Wow, she's destined to be the first hero for the entire game. All right, we're going to go and get our Vampire ready. So Claudia, who almost became Dragon Food, is going to gain her 4 AP back. And we're also going to unveil her class card as well. And she's ready to go. Our Watcher is going to go first, and the first action she is going to perform is she is going to perform a Discover action by using one of her AP. She's going to discover her nunchakus from the Forging Castle. We are in the Forging Castle. So we have found these. They have now become an asset. So I can veil them, and your foe rolls one less die during this battle. That's going to be really good. It says, derived from the agricultural flail, this deadly weapon was developed by oppressed farmers to defend their land against bandits. Ah, see, we learn something new every day. All right, that's amazing. So we're going to go put this in our assets. So our Watcher has her first asset, her nunchakus. We're going to put them right here. And now this is a weapon card, so I cannot have any more weapons 
for our watcher. So if we find another one, we're going to have to discard this one. But we're good at these non-chakras. I think they're going to be pretty good. And we can have, of course, like I said, six assets at max. We can also only ever have six items. And we can also only ever have six rumors in our hand. There's a lot of things that have to do with six in this game. So that is where we are with her. She has completed her first action. We're going to go on to Claudia. So sadly, we're going to move Claudia, and she feels like the weight of the Killforth world is against her. She's going to have to move over to this, which means that Lightning Strike is going to make her lose an AP. And she's going to have to pay one just to move there. So she's already used two. Now, there isn't any encounter in the plains, and hopefully we don't find anything like the Mist Dragon again. We're going to go ahead and see what we find. We have found a bootlegger. Here is our stranger. Oh, that's awesome. Neutral planes, map, trophy. Now the trophies only are gonna happen if I'm able to defeat this with my influence. Perform a free market action. Oh, that'll be kind of cool. Driven from her home by failing markets. This entrepreneur has come to the Eastern frontier to ply her trade. All right, we're gonna put that right there. Now I have to pay another AP to go ahead and counter this. So that's the end of her turn for now. Speaking of encountering, she is going to use 1 AP to encounter our Spirit Grove. So our Spirit Grove gets to either be tested with Stealth, Influence, or Study. Now her best stat is Study. She can roll five dice, but she does have a two Stealth, or a three Stealth, I mean, when it comes to using our Ninja as, his, as her class. So I think it's going to be best to try to do this with Stealth. We only need to get a success or three successes and we have three stealth right here so we have five dice we can roll or we can roll three or we can roll two two is terrible we're gonna roll three three dice to try to get this we're gonna go for our stealth skill to try to get enough let's see what we do we got one 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 that's it all right so we got one i'm gonna go ahead and put this right here and now that's the end of her action we're gonna move on to our vampire's turn so Claudia, again, is going to do an encounter action to try to influence our stranger to help her out. So our bootlegger has a four influence. So we have to get four successes in order to influence her to help us out. Now we've got our four dice we're going to roll for our race and class card. So I'm going to pick those up and see how we do. Now if I don't roll any successes during this attempt, she's going to turn into a person that's going to attack me. She's going to turn into an enemy and I'm going to have to take her out. So hopefully we get at least one success. We got one success. That's great. So we're going to go ahead and put a success on that card and we're going to move back over to our watcher's turn. And our watcher again is going to use one AP to go ahead and try to sneak through the grove. So she's going to roll three dice. Let's see how she does. I want to get at least one more success out of this. I got one. That's perfect. We're going to gain our one success. And then I'm going to go ahead and use, she's got five fate. So I'm going to use one of our fate to go ahead, gain another success, which gives us three. We have completed the spirit grove. So we're going to go ahead and take our rewards for the Spirit Grove. The first thing I can choose is either to take two gold or I can take a loot token. I believe the gold is going to be the way to go here again. I'm going to go ahead and grab two gold for going and taking on the Spirit Grove. We're going to put that down here with our other two gold. So we have four gold for our Watcher, which isn't too bad. I think we're doing okay. Now the next thing we have to do is decide if we want to keep this as a rumor or gain an al or a title. Now the trouble is it's really tough because I do need the forest for one of my keywords so we're probably going to keep it but I get to relocate to any location so if I grab a title any title I grab I could just instantly relocate to that place and gain the title as a discovery action. Of course if it is in gloom I would have to probably suffer the consequences because it's going to take me one AP to discover whatever that title is but sadly we're not going to do that we are going to keep this for its rumor of a forest. So our Watcher does get to do the final thing, which is relocate to any location. Even though I didn't grab the title, I am still going to relocate right here to the shrine. And the reason I'm going to do that is, of course, we still need a mountain, and there's a mountain right over there we could walk to. And with our Watcher done, we're going to go ahead and spend another AP to confront our bootlegger here with our four influence dice. Again, if I don't get a success, we have to fight her. So we got, oh wow, look, we have four successes. That's amazing. All right, well, we were definitely influencing her on this turn. She totally bought whatever we were selling. So she's gonna go ahead and we're gonna gain the rewards from our bootlegger. So we're gonna claim our rewards for our bootlegger. The first thing, of course, is we can either take one gold or we can take a loot token. And one gold really isn't gonna do anything for us. So again, we're gonna reach into our handy bag of awesome here. And hopefully we don't find a trap this time. We have found, oh, what's this? It says, 
hookah pipe. Add one success to any influence test. Oh, that'll be really good. All right, we're gonna take that. Now, the other thing, of course, is we can take this as a rumor or we can go ahead and grab an ally card. And we're gonna take it as a rumor because we need that planes and we need a stranger. So we can use it for either one of those. Now, sadly, it says down here, map, trophy, influence. We did use their influence action to gain this card. It says perform a free market action. I could perform a free market action right now, but I don't have any reason to really do that. I only have one gold, so and I don't really wanna spend that gold on anything in the market. So drawing the three cards and buying something isn't gonna happen. Selling back my cards for half price are both worth one. Again, not worth it. And the other thing is healing, and I've got full health, so the market action isn't gonna do me any good. So we're gonna move on to the watcher's turn. So we're gonna use our final AP to move over to the Divine Heights, but the Divine Heights does have a power here. It says heroes gain one AP when they move into this location for the first time on any day. So basically I've moved for free. We're gonna move over there and gain back our AP. So we still have one more we can do. Now there is no encounter here, so we're gonna go ahead and draw a card from our mountain deck and let's see what we found. Spinning pillar. Oh, I can do either an influence, which ain't going to happen, but a study test of four. That's not too bad. We've got four study or five study. I mean, quest, destroy mountain, map, trophy, relocate to any location. Wow, there's a lot of cards out there that will let you relocate. Sadly, I need this card again. I don't want to relocate with it. Oh, but that spell. I might want the spell. All right. The clockwork mechanism that perpetually powers this mo monument to a dead civilization is a mystery. Whoops, all right. So we're gonna go ahead and put that right there. And we still have one AP. We could choose to go ahead and give this a shot. I don't see why we don't. I mean, what's the worst that can happen? We don't get enough successes. That's really about it. But right now it's our vampire's turn to go ahead and go next. Now, Claudia has no more AP, so she's going to go and make camp. So with our final AP, we're gonna give this a shot. I don't see why not. I mean, it's a pretty long shot here to see if we're actually gonna get this, but we could give it a shot. I need five dice. I have a five study skill and I need four successes. Now, if I don't get the four successes, I'm gonna lose all the success in this card when we go to the night phase, but I got nothing else to use the AP for, so let's give it a shot. We got one, two, three, four, five. We need five successes. We cannot get five successes. We got two, that's too bad. Oh well, that's okay. We're gonna move into the night phase now because she's gonna to have to go ahead and make camp. So since both of our characters have made camp, we're gonna go ahead and see what our next night card is. It is the festival. Oh, what is the place? Respite. It says revealed. Place this place at divine heights. Map, trophy, two loot. Oh, if we complete this, we get two loot. That's pretty cool. It says, despite the encroaching gloom and demonic nighttime terrors, the free people still find time and reasons to celebrate. So we get three gold and a title if we're able to complete this, and the Divine Heights falls into gloom. And I forgot to put the other place into gloom too, so we're gonna put two places into gloom. We're gonna put this one, and we're also gonna put Heaven's Gate from our last night card. I forgot to do that. The Frozen Portal is right down here. We have to put that into Gloom as well. And when this goes into Gloom, it loses its special power, which was actually really good. Heroes may spend two AP to move directly to any location as their move action. But sadly, now that it's in Gloom, we can't do that. That happened because of our Night Card. I forgot to turn it to Gloom. It says down here, Heaven's Gate falls into Gloom. And now we have to go ahead and put the Divine Heights into Gloom. Oh, sad face, look at that. That's right where we are, that's terrible. Now, of course, it still gains, it keeps its power where the other one lost its power. This one still has the power where I can gain an AP when I move into it for the first turn. And both of these are now here. We could go ahead and take care of either one of these one. Now, we're not looking for a place or a respite. We're looking for quest, we're looking for mountains. So we probably really need to take that one out. Now, of course, when the mountain one goes into Gloom, we also have to take one from our plot deck as well. Well, and something I failed to mention is when I made up the plot decks, I made sure to separate them into mountains and forests. I believe that's what you do. If I'm wrong, please let me know. But we're going to go ahead and take our next mountain. Uh, what is it? Plot card. It is crawling flesh from the render of flesh. Enemy undead. Well, it's all enemies undead. It says, sighing, shifting, and shrieking. This coagulated mass of fleshy limbs, eyes, mouths, and other apertures appears to be somehow fashioned from bodies of a dozen or so pitiful humans. As they scream and wail, you realize with horror that they must still be alive. It is then that you recognize one of the faces. 
you set about trying to free the poor soul from the heaving pile. Discard one stranger rumor to defeat this, and if I don't, when a battle round starts, each hero loses one hit point. Oh my goodness, that's terrible. All right, well, that's also right there. All of this is happening in the Divine Heights. So Claudia is going to go ahead and gain back her AP, and we're going to be passing our first hero token over to Claudia. That's right, she made camp first. So Claudia, of course, gains her four AP, and she gains the first hero token. So we're going to start by having Claudia go ahead and spend one AP to go ahead and search this location. We're still looking for one more keyword. And since we didn't move into this location, we don't lose any extra AP due to that lightning card. So we're going to draw our plane's location and see what we find. We have found a place, Nate, a water slide. Oh, we could probably do this one pretty easily. Either three stealth or one study. All right, it says down here, map trophy, relocate to any mountain location. Oh, that's going to be perfect. Oh, this is like a perfect, finally she has got something that's perfect for her. It says, the ground gives way and you are suddenly sloshing down a waterfall or a river. Could it be a man-made? Oh, wow, that's pretty awesome. Maybe it's kind of like the ones Napoleon made from uh, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. I don't know. We're going to put that right here and we're probably going to take that on. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and attempt to complete this, what is it, quest? Quest. We're going to try to complete this quest. I really want to get this done because then I can go ahead and do a regale action and level her up. So we're going to try to take out this quest, but of course I think this is going to take a couple turns. We need four successes. I get five dice, so at least that's helpful. We get five dice. Let's see how we do. We got two. Two successes. That's a good way to start. So we're going to go ahead and put two successes on there. And we're going to have to come back to this in our next turn. Now, Claudia is going to use her second AP to try to complete our water slide, and she's going to use her study skill. She gets three dice, and we're going to see how we do. We only need one success, so come on, we got to be able to get one. We got one. Oh, that's perfect. All right, we can take advantage of all the rewards for this water slide. So if we go down the rewards on our water slide again, we get one gold barf. That's terrible. We're going to go ahead and grab our loot token yet again. She's like loot token queen because she keeps getting all these things that are worth one. All right, let's see what we found. We found a buckler. Prevent the loss of one hit point. Oh, that'll be good. All right, we're up to three of these items, though. I can only have a six, so we've got halfway there. The next thing we have to choose is, of course, if we want to keep this or if we want to turn this, turn this into a title. We're, of course, going to keep it because now we are ready to go. Two planes and a plane, sorry, a stranger and an enemy. So we have all three of the t uh, rumors or, sorry, keywords we need to complete our saga. We just need to get a hold of five bucks. That's what we need. Now, the last thing we do here is since I was able to successfully complete this, I gain the trophy. Relocate to any mountain location. And Claudia is going to relocate right over here where our stranger is. I've got a great plan. This is going to be awesome. And that's going to be the end of her turn. It's going to be our stranger's turn. And again, she's going to confront this spinning pillar with one of her AP. And she's going to team up with Claudia in a true co-op fashion. They're going to work together to try to defeat the spinning pillar. Our watcher is going to go ahead and attempt to defeat the spinning pillar. We've already got two successes. We just need two more. And Claudia is going to help out. Now, how does Claudia help out? That's a great question. So the watcher has five dice because of her study skill. And with a teammate helping, they get to add a die to the test. So I get six dice to try to get two successes against the spinning pillar. Let's see how we do. And of course, we've got our two successes. That means we have our four successes for the spinning pillar. So upon defeating the spinning pillar, we get to gain all the stuff. First off, four bucks. Definitely taking the bucks. I'm going to take four gold because that's a ridiculous number. Way better than the loot token. So now she has eight gold right now. Now, Claudia helped out. So I could actually divvy up the loot as any way I see fit. So I'm actually going to only take one of it. And I'm going to give three over to Claudia because she's pretty close to being able to regale. But she needs one more gold. Actually, I lied. I think I might give her one more just so she can do it. That way she could regale the next turn. Or maybe not. Okay, I got a plan. We're going to keep all five. That's just fine. All right. And she's going to have four over there. Next thing we have to do is I have to relocate to any location. Oh, I didn't know I was going to relocate. That's terrible. I don't want to move. I want to stay right here. Oh, terrible. All right. How are we going to do this? Oh, no. That's not what I wanted. I wanted to stay there. Well, I could relocate right back here, I guess. I don't have any reason to actually not be here, I guess. All right. We are going to give her this gold and then move somewhere. 
yeah, I don't really want to move. I want to stay right here because I actually want to take on that other quest as well. So we're going to go ahead and just relocate right back here. I don't have any reason not to do that. All right, we're going to relocate back to where we are. We're going to keep this as a rumor. So now she has everything she needs for her regale action, but I am going to actually give that other gold over to Claudia and see maybe she can go ahead and regale and she might regale from the next one. All right, that's going to be it. We're going to move into Claudia's turn and I think she's going to attempt the next quest. All right, that took a lot to figure out. Sorry about that. We're going to go ahead and continue this. Crawling flesh is on the bottom. We're not dealing with that for a while. We are going to go ahead and deal with the festival, though. I think we're going to go ahead and try to take on the festival here. We're going to go for the study skill, and I'm going to have Claudia go ahead and use her AP to confront the festival. So again, we're going to have Claudia go ahead and try to use her study skill on the festival. We need four successes. Now, we get three dice because she's Claudia, but I'm going to have her go ahead and help her out. They're going to join forces yet again to try to take down the festival. So she's going to go ahead and roll these four dice and hope for some successes. She got two successes. Oh, that's awesome. So we're going to place two successes right here, and that's going to be the end of her action. And now we're going to go right into Claw or our watcher's turn. Our watcher is going to spend one AP to also go ahead and try to do a study test. So both our characters only have one AP left. Now she of course is going to gain six dice because we're going to be having Claudia join forces and giving her that extra die. So we're going to roll these up and I need to get two successes. Come on, I'll use two. And I got two. There we go. So again, we have defeated the festival. All working together is the way to go. So upon defeating the festival together, we're able to take the rewards. We get three gold or a loot token. Guess what? Yep, three gold. We're going to take the gold for that, and we're going to put that down with the rest of them. Now she has enough to regale as well. Now the next thing we can do is either keep this as a rumor, or we can take it as a title. I think we're going to take it as a title, because I don't need a place or respite anymore. So we're going to grab some of our cooler cards. We're going to grab a title and see what we find. We have found Debt Payer. Title reputation hero gain fight plus two during battles with strangers who have your enemy tokens all right it says down here tanyana always paid back her debts whether her creditors wanted them paid back or not now i find this in the herod ruins i don't know where the herod ruins are right now oh they're kind of a little bit of ways away but we're going to hold on to this this is another rumor for us and we're going to go ahead also and take the loot we're able to take two loot tokens because of our trophy here. So we're going to go ahead and grab those from our bag. And since she only has one token, these are going to be kind of good. So she gets two loot tokens. Let's see what she finds. The first one she found is... Beer! Why not at the festival? Of course you're going to find beer! That's awesome! Discard any one enemy token. All right, so if we decide to actually go against strangers and we fail our action to be able to influence them, we can discard this so that we don't have to fight them or maybe some other things that are going to make it happen. Incense stick. Add one success to a study test. Wow, that's ridiculous. She's got so much study right now, it's out of control. All right, and we're going to go ahead and discard this because, again, we took this as a title. So Claudia is going to do her regale action as her last AP. I know I don't have any AP left and I'm in a gloomed location, but that's okay. I have the ability to move with that card and that's probably what we're gonna do. So now to do a regale action, I have to pay five gold first, then I have to do it. So I'm gonna pay all my gold, I've got five gold. We're gonna pay it all and now we're gonna do our regale action. So the first thing we have to do is go ahead and prove that we have these keywords. And if they're rumors, I have to discard them. So I'm going to be discarding all three of these cards because I have a planes, a stranger, and an enemy. So we're going to go ahead and put these back in their respective decks in the discard pile. Next, we're going to gain a hit point for leveling up. We also get an action point associated with that hit point, but it doesn't go here, it goes over here. The next thing I get to do is look at the top, or my two cards that are my level one cards. I can either take the Wanderer or Karate. So the Wanderer says, when you draw Planes Encounters, draw one extra encounter and choose one to discard. All right, that's something we can do, or else I got this one. When your foe loses one or more HP, it loses one additional HP. I think that's the way to go. We're gonna lose Karate, we're gonna use learn Karate. All right, Ralph Macchio here, eat your heart out. We're gonna put that right here in our level one slot. We're gonna put this one on the bottom because we're not gonna see it again. And we're gonna get, where's our level twos? Level twos are coming soon. Well, we gotta get to them. We're gonna put those here and when we choose our level two, we'll go ahead and put those right there. All right, so we know karate now. 
And now we have to go ahead and go to our chapter two for our capture lawbreaker. And it says, the convict was absconded whilst you were relaying the truth to the locals about the lawbreakers fiendish activities. They made good their escape into the swamps and mires. At least you have set the record straight in this area and your reputation has been bolstered accordingly. Now find the next contact who can point you in the direction of your quarry. So now we're going to need to find yet another stranger with the line of lot of strangers. We also need to get a title this time and Badlands. Now I know our watcher has a title, but we can't trade rumors and you can't trade titles once you find them as assets. So she's going to have to find her own title. Now with the regale action completed, our watcher is just gonna spend her last AP to move right over to the Mashabre Shrine. Just because I'm gonna regale with her next turn and I don't really know where she's gonna be needing to go to find what keywords next. So just starting back at the shrine might be our best bet. And last but not least, our Claudia the Vampire is going to use her card with horsemanship. Gain one move AP by veiling the card. So she's also going to move back over there. Even though she's looking for a stranger, a title, and a Badlands card, just starting again at the shrine might be our best bet because there's more planes and stuff. They'll just It's just a nice place to start. That's just my theory. All right, that's the end. She's going to go into camp and she is also going to camp, which means we're going to be moving into our night phase. Now, since we didn't end in any of these locations, we don't lose any hit points. We're going to draw our next night card and see what it is. Oh my gosh, it's a major earthquake. Reveal, discard all cards from Frozen Portal, then place this card on Frozen Portal. No encounters may be drawn here. Wow. With thunderous ear-splitting crack, the very earth itself has been rent asunder. Frozen portal falls into gloom. So because I can't read, and I thought this was that, what, frozen portal, this is Heaven's Gate. Heaven's Gate is over here. Now, we didn't actually go there this turn, so it's not the end of the world, but that is the one that falls into gloom, not the frozen portal from the last time. That was my mistake, our lightning strike. I flipped over the wrong card, but that's okay, because it's in gloom now, our frozen portal. I'm going to go ahead and put this on that frozen portal, just like it tells me to. Now, if we do end here, we don't actually lose any hit points, so this might not be a bad place to end. So moving into the dawn phase, we're going to go ahead and get our characters all ready to go. Now she has five AP because she regaled and got an extra hit point. Sadly, I couldn't get the watcher to do it before she ran out of AP, but that's okay. We're going to be moving our first hero token back over to our watcher. Our watcher was missing her first player token. She really liked it. So we're going to go ahead and give her all of her AP back and we're going to move into her turn first. And she's going to go ahead and start by doing that regale action. So the first thing she's going to do is pay her five gold and do the regale action, meaning she has to show the three keywords she has. And she has mountain, forest, and planes. And those are what we have on our chapter card. So we're going to go ahead and discard those into the respective discard piles. We're also going to be able to gain one health point. Now, of course, we do get an extra stamina or stamina point, but we don't, or AP point, sorry, action point, but we don't get to use it again this turn. At least that's what I understand. We're going to go ahead and also level our character up, meaning we get to look at our two level one cards. The first one is Woodsman. When you draw a forest encounter, draw one extra encounter card and choose one to discard. I also, when a battle starts, an en the enemy loses one HP. If the enemy has no HP left, skip the skirmish step. I don't see why I don't take this. This looks really good. When a battle starts, the enemy loses a hit point just automatically. I just veil this. If an enemy has no HP left, skip the skirmish. Yeah, totally going to take this. So we're going to go ahead and take our Kung Fu. So we had one of our characters, our vampire knows karate, and our watcher knows Kung Fu. Now we're going to put our woodsman card on the bottom of the deck because we're never going to see that card. Now, if we were playing with two different rebels, the second player that got to do their regale action would have to take this card. They would have no choice. And this is probably really good if you're going around searching everything, but I already know that her fight skill is only three, and we don't have anything helping us with that right now, so we need to get as much, do as much damage and help her in combat the best we can. So now that she's done that, we're going to go ahead and read our chapter card. So we're going to go ahead and see what chapter two, A Haunted Past, lies before us. 
With a little mystical aid and all the resources available to you, you follow the suspicious tracks to discover a coterie of undead fiends carrying a struggling body in a cloth sack, tied up with chains. Ambushing the malicious ghouls, you quickly overcome them and manage to set free Gillian's friend. They soon become a trusted companion, but they inform you that there is more to Gillian and his troubled past than meets the eye. So now we need to find an ally, an item, and a spell. Now, good thing is we actually already have an item. It doesn't have to be a rumor. It can be an asset. Now, moving into Claudia's turn, she's going to spend one action point to go ahead and move back over there. So she's moved, used one to move, but she also has to take another action point because of that stupid lightning storm that is apparently preventing her from finding everything she wants to in this world. She's going to have to t lose one AP. Now that we're here and there's no encounters there, we're going to draw our next planes encounter and see what we find. We have found an innkeeper. Oh, how cute, an innkeeper. Stranger, neutral planes. Here we go, we have found our stranger. And I can perform a market action if I want to after I do this. It says, um, amid dread talk of awakening ancient monstrosities and all-consuming deadly gloom, Harold's bar has never been so busy. Oh, he looks so happy, how about that? All right, we're gonna put him right there. Now it's gonna be our watcher's turn and I'm panned out real far because I'm planning to use our deed here to be able to use this item. It says relocate to any Badlands location. I'm gonna relocate right down here to the Black Gate, the cave, I'm sorry, Black Cave and I'm gonna go ahead and spend one AP to go ahead and confront our fallen shrine, which I'm gonna need three study or three sneak. Now, I did mention, I was wrong, when you, you can give up any rumors. I just can't give title assets when I trade. So I can't give out, I can give the rumor, but not the actual asset of a title. So our watcher is going to go ahead and roll some dice. She has five skill in study, and we only need to get three successes. I know I say only like it's going to be easy. We'll see how this goes. I got one, I only got one success out of all those dice. Well, that's a good start. One's better than nothing. So we're gonna put one success on here and we're gonna go into Claudia's turn. Now Claudia's gonna go ahead and spend an AP so that she can confront that innkeeper. Her friend, the innkeeper, she has four influence to try to influence him to help her. Now she needs to get three successes. So this might take a little bit of time, but we're gonna work real hard. We got two, look at that, two successes. Now, if I didn't wanna waste any more time, I could spend one of our fate tokens, but I think we're gonna be doing okay. We're gonna just do this for now. And we're gonna go ahead and probably clean this up in this next turn. Now our watcher is going to attempt to hopefully take out the fallen shrine, or at least discover it's evil or whatever. She's gonna roll her five dice and study it. Let's see how she does. Oh, there we go, she got three. Why didn't she do it the first roll? <laughs> she has enough to defeat the fallen shrine. So she had to use one of her AP to do that, and we're gonna go ahead and reap the rewards. This is gonna be awesome. Now the trophy here, force draw and fully resolve a night card, then play continues normally. That's not gonna happen because I accidentally did that in the first video. We weren't supposed to do that until after I defeated it, and I kind of failed in that aspect and did it automatically. We're gonna take the five gold for sure instead of that loot token. So she's well on her way to already being able to regale yet again. And now I can either take a title or I could take this into my hand as a rumor. Well, I don't need any of those places, so I'm gonna take the title, mainly because I could just pass it over to our Claudia, the vampire, if she needs it. So let's see what we get from our title. We got, oh wow, look at this, Ar ox cart rider. Look at that, <laughs> it's awesome. Title steed. All right, hero, you may carry two extra items that do not count toward your asset limit. Limit, their keywords must be unique. Okay, wow. Slow and steady, strong and reliable. The ox is a popular mode of transport and carrying goods. And this is found in the spider grove. I'm really not that close to the spider grove, but we're gonna go ahead and take that title as a rumor and we're gonna go ahead and discard this card. So again, we're gonna to attempt to convince our innkeeper here that we're good and we should he should help us out. Now that's gonna cost us one of our AP, bringing us down to one AP. We can roll four dice and let's hope we convince this guy. Oh, look, we got our last success. We influenced him. So we get to reap the rewards and as usual, it's one gold. <laughs> she only gets one gold cards. So she's gonna go ahead and grab something from that loot bag instead because that one gold isn't really gonna to help too much. So we're gonna to see what we found. We have found blanket. 
lose one AP and heal two. So instead of doing a rest action for only one hit point, I can do a rest action for two hit points. Hopefully we never have to use that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take this into my hand as a rumor because I need the stranger keyword yet again. Now I could also do a market action. It says perform a free market action, but we're not gonna do that because again, I have no gold on this character. So there's no reason to try to heal or gain an item or anything like that, and she's already at full health. Now our Watcher is gonna take advantage of the Black Cave. Heroes may perform one move action here to move directly to the Serene Lake, like we've never seen that before. We've used this like 132,000 times. So we're gonna go ahead and move her right back up here, and we're gonna use her last AP to move back to the Serene Lake. Now, moving to the Plains location, I'm gonna trigger that Lightning again, which means I'm gonna lose one more AP, but I don't have any more. So I don't think I have to lose any. How about that? That's pretty good. Now we're gonna draw a Plains location, because or encounter, because there isn't one there. And we have found, oh, a museum of pain. Look at this, it says quest, destroy planes. Oh, look at this trophy, item. Oh, that's awesome, I'd love to get an item. All right, it says, emblems of various ancient and vile deities adorn the walls here in this monumentum to the human capacity for pain. All right, this thing's gonna be awesome. Oh, look at this, I can get a spell as a rumor from this place. Oh, this is gonna be awesome. We're totally gonna put this here and we're totally gonna take advantage of that. Now, since I'm in the same location as Claudia, I can perform a deed for exchanging things. So we can exchange gold, loot tokens, rumors, items, or spells. Now I can't, like I said before, move titles that I've already claimed as assets, but I can move rumors. So I've got my two rumor titles right here that I don't really need. I think this ox card is pretty cool. So I'm gonna give this rumor to Claudia because she's looking for a title as one of her keywords to her chapter two. And we're of course gonna keep this for ourselves. I can also give gold, and I'm gonna give two gold to Claudia as well because she needs some in order to hopefully do a regale action. She might gain two gold from being able to complete this because I think that's what we're gonna to try to do next because wow, an item and a spell, that's awesome. So Claudia does have one more AP and I think she is gonna use it to try to do a study action against that. Now Claudia is gonna recruit her valiant companion. They're gonna to work together to try to defeat the Museum of Pain and what better person to go look at a Museum of Pain than a vampire, how about that, huh? So she's gonna do this study action, which means she's going to gain three dice. Now she's gonna help her by giving her one more dice. So she gets to roll four. I need three successes, it's probably not gonna happen, but who knows, you might get lucky and get some really good rolls here. We got one, we only got one. Now, if I wanted to, both of these characters have not used their fate this turn, so I could use two fate tokens in a cooperative fashion to try to, to complete the Museum of Pain, but I'm not going to, I'm gonna save our fate and just say that we got one success, but moving into the night phase, we're gonna lose the success on the Museum of Pain. So we're gonna be entering into the night phase, so both of our characters are gonna go ahead and camp. She had camped first, so she will remain our first hero. We're gonna to have to draw yet another night card and see what has fallen into gloom. Horrendous monster, wow, that looks horrendous all right. It's amazing, four fight and has five health. Place this enemy at celestial tree. Monsters are legion through the untamed hinterlands but this beast secured its fearsome reputation by consuming entire villages. Wow, this thing's pretty awesome. The celestial tree falls into gloom. All right, we're gonna go put him there. Well, what do you know? The celestial tree is actually right here. Okay, we're just gonna go ahead and flip this and we're gonna go put him right up here. We're not gonna go anywhere near that celestial tree. That thing's out of control. Five health and four fight. That's better than anything we have. So Claudia is gonna go ahead and grab all five of her AP and she has her two of her keywords for her next part of her saga. So all she needs is the Badlands. And her Watcher is also gonna claim all of her AP. Now actually she has only one of her keywords. She has item, because the Nunchakus do count as items. And when they're assets, when you do go do your, do your regale action, you do not have to discard them. Only you have to discard rumors. And assets can stay there. I mean, you could discard it and you can also sell it if you want to. Now before we move into our next turn, we're gonna stop the video right here. We've been doing pretty good. Our Watcher and Claudia, our Vampire, are doing great. I think we should be moving a little bit faster than we are, but now we're starting to gain some assets and we actually leveled up so we get an extra AP. So hopefully we can be moving around and gaining things a little bit faster. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell symbol so you know when the next part comes out. Also, please feel free to leave anything in the comments below. I would love to hear from everyone. 
And if you're excited to see if our characters can make it through the shadows of Killforth, then I need you to meet me at the co-op shop. Time.